Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be finishing working on the 14 bolt rear end. We're going to be removing these brackets, cleaning up the paint and rust, and getting ready to make some cuts to narrow this rear end. I did find out after removing the differential cover, uh, we have 410 gears, which is what I wanted, uh, but uh, the differential itself turns out to be a G80 Eaton locker. Um, I was kind of hoping that it's an uh, open differential, that way I could weld it up. Um, after doing some research on these on this locker, I don't think it's going to handle the punishment we plan to throw at it. So we might have to readdress this later on with uh, replacing it with an actual spool. Um, other than that, let's, uh, let's get to work. Got the axle tube all cleaned up. You'll notice that there's some pitting on the axle tubes. Not too concerned about that because this is going to be an area that's going to be cut out anyway. It's like that on both sides. It's probably from where the U-bolts were for the leaf springs. Um, pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm going to clean it up a little bit further, but I'm going to call it a day. I'm just going to clean up the floor and then uh, start back on it tomorrow. So today we're going to start marking the location of where we're going to make our first cuts. Uh, we decided on measuring out two inches from this flange to make the initial cut. And then once this is cut, we'll make the second mark to where we'll cut off the additional material. We've decided to go six inches on this side and six inches and three quarters on this side. And the reason we're going to additional three quarters of an inch is the ring and pinion, is, or the actual pinion gear, is not centered in this housing. The reason for that is a lot of manufacturers will offset the engine and transmission on their vehicles to make room for like the steering and brake assembly. Um, so since on our vehicle the engine and transmission is centered, we're going to offset this uh, pinion gear to make it centered in this housing. So that's why we're taking the additional three quarters of an inch. So once we do our cuts and it's welded over, the center is actually going to be moved over three quarters of an inch. Here's a tip for you guys. If you're ever working with hot rolled steel and you need to remove this mill scale, instead of grinding it, pick yourself up some muriatic acid. Then you're gonna wanna mix it one part acid, three parts water. Let your parts soak for about 15 to 20 minutes. Your parts will go from looking like this to looking like this. I'm gonna take these aluminum blanks and machine out some alignment pucks that will help uh, align the rear end during welding. 
I'll go ahead and machine them out and then uh, I'll show you how they fit on the rear end. Finally got all the parts machined that I need. I first made this axle tube sleeve. You'll notice that there's this lip on it. This is so when installing the sleeve into the axle tube, it'll sit flush up against the, the tube. And that way when I install the outer snout, it won't push this sleeve inward. I also made these outer alignment pucks. This will slide into the snout itself. And then you have the inner alignment pucks which mount where the differential bearings are. So I'll use this inch and a quarter DOM tube, slide it through the whole axle housing. That way it helps keep everything aligned during the welding process so nothing warps out of place. Also made some uh, four link brackets of quarter inch steel. So I'll go ahead and install them before uh, installing the snout. You see on this side it's already ready to be welded. And then previously, I mentioned that the pinion is offset about three quarters of an inch. I was actually mistaken. So I made this tool to sit where the pinion bearing is to get the true center. Turns out it's an inch and a quarter offset to the passenger side. So we ended up taking six inches off the or passenger side and seven and a quarter inches off the driver's side. So we narrowed this rear end uh, 13 and a quarter inches. I'm gonna go ahead and finish uh, installing the alignment jigs and start welding.
just got done doing the first root pass. You probably noticed in the video I was doing it in sections. That's to help avoid any warpage during welding. And as you can notice, bar spins freely, so appears I was successful. I'm gonna go ahead and finish welding and then let this thing cool off and then uh, we'll wrap it up. Well, finally got this thing all welded up. I'll come back at a later date and dress these welds, smooth them up. But as you can see, the alignment bar spins freely, so there's no warpage in the axle housing. Really happy with that. Uh, sorry it took me so long to get this video out. Uh, I just needed to make sure this was done properly. Uh, I had to wait on some parts in my new lathe to show up so I could machine these parts. Because if you have a warped rear end, it'll cause premature bearing wear and alignment issues. On the next video, we'll finally start working on the rear suspension. But till then, I really appreciate you guys watching these videos and I'll see you next time.